me. The American people have had it with years and decades of Clinton corruption and scandals. Impeachment for lying. Remember that? The Clintons are the sordid past. We will be the very bright and clean future. He can say whatever he wants to say, as we well know. We have seen it in uh, real time over the last many months. And uh, I'm going to keep running my campaign talking about what I think the American people uh, are interested in. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump today, as we get a look at this race, the average, the special report average of the recent five polls that we trust, uh, looking at this average right now, you have Hillary Clinton uh, plus 2.9, I'm sorry, 2.2 in this uh, average of polls. Uh, if you look at the places they were today, uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, first of all, in Iowa, there you see Donald Trump up uh, five points in this four-way race with the Libertarian and the Green Party candidates. And in New Hampshire, you see Clinton up uh, 5.4. That's the state of this race at this moment. Let's bring in our panel. Jonah Goldberg, senior editor at National Review. Lisa Booth, columnist with The Washington Examiner. Zeke Miller, political reporter for Time. And syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, Jonah, state of the race. Um, I think the state of the race is that Hillary has a very narrow, very narrow lead, and the, and the polls are very tight, and you go look state by state, they're very tight. I think that coming out of the debate, which I thought Trump lost narrowly, technically, um, uh, not very consequentially, the post-debate spin war, he has been losing in ep by epic proportions. Um, three days in, he's still arguing about whether he called a... Miss Universe fat. It is a very weird discipline, lack of discipline and message control coming out. What? Why is that? What happens there, do you think, Lisa? I don't understand. I mean, he, he absolutely took the bait with Hillary Clinton. They had an ad cut and ready to go. And when you're not doing so great with women and also Hispanics, why are you attacking a, his, an Hispanic woman? Uh, you know, it's certainly not going to help his case. And we saw Donald Trump actually start doing much better in the polls after the conventions when he finally stuck to the issues, when he finally started giving some of these more substantive, nuanced speeches about the issues that Americans actually care about. So it's puzzling why he would sort of go back to what we saw with the cons uh, in, in this unnecessary wa you know, war that he's now waging. Uh, However, it's it's today very on puzzling. The, on the stump, he didn't uh, today. He talked a lot about uh, the email investigation. And Comey's Which is what he should be talking about, absolutely. And the economy and the Clinton problems of the past. Uh, so it seems like in interviews he gets drawn out and he answers fully and completely. But I think that demonstrates uh, sort of the the uh, lack of discipline, which is what Jonah had, had mentioned. And that is a problem for Donald Trump because he does do well when he commands the narrative, when he is in charge of the narrative, when he's driving the narrative. And that is how he puts Hillary Clinton on her heels. I mean, he was able to do that most recently leading up to the debate. So that's where he needs to keep his focus of, you know, staying that message disciplined uh, so that he can keep Hillary Clinton on, the he on her heels and he can talk about issues that Americans actually care about. Zeke. I mean, Donald Trump is somebody who's made his entire career about winning. And here he was in the debate night and sort of widely panned performance, you know, probably lost on points, I think, to John's point. Like, it, it, it wasn't a blowout, but he lost. And so now 80-plus million people, largest debate audience in history, if he, saw if him If you lose. looked at the first 30 minutes and you yeah. were a Trump supporter, you were probably pretty happy. Yeah, but he won those first 30, but then... But it was a 90-minute debate. He took the bait, and this for him, and he had to make peace with that. And we saw him sort of struggle to see, make excuses about the microphone, that, the, the bum microphone, to, you know, he praised Lester Holt in the spin room, first candidate to go in the spin room, that we can, that we can re remember at least. And then now today saying that, that Lester Holt was rigging the debate in Hillary Clinton's favor. He's coming up with excuses and then also claiming that he won. It's all kind of bizarre messages. So a lot of it is playing out in that one, the most important real estate on the campaign trail, which is that one square foot above the candidate's shoulders. Right. So, Charles, the next debate, you know, not next week we have the vice presidential debate and then the following week. Um, he's still very close in a lot of these states. We don't know the true impact probably for another couple of days. We have new polls out, by the way, tomorrow. Uh, so you want to tune in for that on special report. Your thoughts? I don't understand why everybody is surprised of his lack of discipline. I mean, he's been out there for 15 months. He's completely undisciplined. Yes, for about a month he has been led around, shackled, handcuffed by a staff, made to read from the teleprompter. But the minute you let him loose, meaning on the debate stage where there is no prompter, and then immediately after he's reacting, what emerges is his central weakness. 
vanity. Okay, so we have seen it, this it all affect, along. It doesn't affect his his base supporters, but when he's but trying to people. but when he's trying to reach out to independents and people who haven't decided, and we should point out there are not that many of them. That's the issue you're saying. Well, I. I don't know whether his strategy was to go after target audiences. I suspect that that's what his staff was hoping. Trump's strategy is to express himself. He did extremely well in doing that in the primaries. He came out of nowhere. He won nobody. There weren't a lot of people who thought he could. And he trusts himself. I mean, anybody's surprised he's continuing the feud with Miss Universe. The worst part was that little interjection about not paying taxes which he now has to defend as well. Because this is a man who, when he's personally attacked, has to reflexively respond to defend his self-image. That's what drives him, and that explains all the things that appear to be puzzling my colleagues over here. <laughs> well, let me uh, play another little exchange that really didn't get a lot of focus because of all of the post-debate focus on uh, Ms. Machado. So let's play uh, the Trump-Clinton on implicit bias. I think implicit bias is a problem for everyone, not just police. I think, unfortunately, too many of us in our great country um, jump to conclusions about each other. She accuses the entire country, including all of law enforcement, of implicit bias, essentially suggesting that everyone, including our police, are basically racist and prejudiced. How can she lead this country when she thinks America is full of racists, deplorables, and irredeemables? We should point out that was Trump today uh, at his event, but the implicit bias, Jonah. Yeah, I think in a normal race, this would be a real vulnerability for, for Hillary Clinton. It's sort of warmed over cultural Marxist hogwash. Um, I'm sure it plays well to her Democratic base. But the problem with this, with the now increasing war about Bill Clinton's infidelities and all of these, and the Clinton Foundation, the Trump Foundation, it reminds me of that scene in The Sopranos where Chris Moltisante has a drug intervention for his drug habit, and he starts lashing out saying, oh yeah, well, I partied with you, and I partied with you. These guys are so... Um, such mirror images of most all of these charges. This is the guy who said a Mexican judge couldn't be fair because he was Mexican and he wasn't even Mexican. These kinds of things, it's very hard to score them because they're such tattered brands and tattered candidates. So what about this issue about the bringing up the Clintons past and Monica Lewinsky and the possibility that that's going to happen at this next debate as we take this, if it happens, down to a different level of this election? Well, I, I mean, I, I do think that it is fair to an extent, not for Donald Trump. I don't think Donald Trump should be a messenger. But to bring it up, I think it's fair to an extent, because Hillary Clinton can't say there and say that every uh, victim deserves to be heard, deserves to be believed. Uh, but then we know it's been widely reported that she went after these women, that she dragged their names through the mud. So I do think that there's hypocrisy there that should be addressed from the Trump campaign. But I don't think that Donald Trump should be the messenger, because I think that diminishes him uh, and his candidacy. And Rush Limbaugh talked extensively about that point uh, all day today.